Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here in this beautiful city. Um, my talk is called Take On Me. Take On Me is actually a 1980s song, very catchy song, very catchy music with some amazing animations. It's by a Norwegian band called Aha. Um, the thing is, I'm not really good at music, so I'm not going to talk about the catchy music, but I'm going to talk about the WoW animations, because that's like my life goal. I really enjoy making these kind of completely useless animations. It's like, hey, I could grab Harry Potter and use TSS gradients and do something like that, because if you can, why wouldn't you? So, hi. Or, hola, I'm Eva, I'm a front end developer by day, I'm protector of useless creativity at night, I'm also a Moxilla tech speaker, and I also organize CSS Conf Argentina. So, by the way, my name is actually all that, but as long as you call me Eva, Eva, or Eva, it's okay. Well, what is this thing? This is something called rotoscoping. It's an animation technique that has more than 100 years old. And this animation is not really easy to make. It takes so much time. Um, the thing is that it's, it's really interesting. And even though it has 100 years old and it began in the movies and cinema, it has eventually gotten into the music video industry, especially with this song in 1985. But also in this another one by Green Day in 2009, and Lily Allen in 2014, and why not? Paramore again in two years ago, and Paramore again in 2018. And why not? Let's mention that, and Justin Bieber this year. So how does it work? Well, rotoscoping consists on recording a completely normal video and drawing on top of that. So you have to draw from 15 to 25 images per second. That's a lot. And you can be drawing like for five hours, then you actually play the video and you have like three seconds of animation. It's not that much, but it will be the best three seconds of your life. <laughs> so you can turn something like this, which looks really what is going on, and to something like this, which looks amazing. So right now, you can do rotoscoping with Adobe Photoshop <laughs> and a Wacom. But we can actually do it in the browser. So the thing is, um, back two years ago, this video came out. It's called Hard Times by Paramore. And when I took a look at this, it was like this light bulb that turns on. And it's like, maybe we could like think what we can do right now in web animations and improve it or see what else we can do. And the thing is, I, kind of took a, a look at what we have right now in the web of traditional animation. Because once again, we keep on bringing things from traditional animation, from movies and from the cinema into the web. And it's really interesting how far we have gotten. For example, we can do today stop motions and motion graphics in the web. If you are into learning stop motion, you should actually Google Rachel Navors because she's an amazing teacher and she has so many videos online and courses as well teaching how to make stop motion animations on the web. And when it comes to motion graphics, um, you can Google Chris Gannon, who is a really nice person and he does these wonderful useless animations as well, like a pizza spinner. So when you're waiting for the website to load but it looks like a pizza, it's great. And also I have to mention Julia Musarova, I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing her name, and she actually did this great thing which is kind of an, an motion graphic animation, but in pure CSS. So take a look at her code pen if you can, because it's amazing. So my question is, can we go further? Can we do something else besides these kind of two traditional animations? Can we make rotoscoping on the web? Well, the answer will surprise you. No, we can't. <laughs> And the reason why is because rotoscoping is something completely handmade. It has like the soul of the people who is drawing. And I love my computer, it's called Minerva, of course it has a name. But it doesn't have a soul. So it's not the same, you cannot really pretend to do something that the human hand can do. But anyway, we can also interact with 
the computer. And if we take a look at music videos, we cannot interact with music videos. It's like you watch it and that's it. So there is a place for improvement. There is a place to do something interesting in there. We can take the basic idea of rotoscoping and take it into the browser. So if we take a look at this part of the video of Hard Times by Paramore, we can see that there are three layers. We see a background layer with kind of blue and yellow moving things. Then there is a second layer. In that second layer, we see these two people dancing. And on top of them, we got the rotoscoping. We got these lines that are moving around. And if you look at the back, um, like behind the scenes, we got this, which is really funny to watch. <laughs> uh, what they did was actually they recorded this video, they reversed it, so it's actually reversed. They removed that green background, filled it with this kind of yellow and blue animations, put themselves, and on top of that, the other animations. So we can do something like this. We can begin with this. We can remove the green background and add something else. That is something called chroma key and it's really common in movies like Avengers. So what they do is they record a movie with a green or blue background. Why green and blue are not? Because it's RGB. Well, we cannot really use red because our faces have a tendency to be red, so we have to choose either green or blue, which is the, the two colors that we don't usually have on our skin. And of course, if we, we use a green background, we don't wear green. If we use blue, we don't wear blue. And once you've got that, once you've got that blue or green background, you need really good light. And I mean really good light. And that means use not natural light. Natural light is like the devil for animations. If you have ever worked on a stop motion animation or even work on something like chroma key, you will understand that natural light is horrible simply because these kind of animations take so much time that maybe you spend eight hours working on it. And in those eight hours, the Earth moves around the sun. So suddenly all the shadows move. And that is a disaster. So we don't want really this kind of natural light. We prefer these lights whenever we work with animations or in this case with chroma key. So let me use chroma key. Uh, let's make chroma key with the user's camera. Because again, we are in the web, we can actually enjoy this. So to do this, what we need to do is to take the user's input camera and take that input and put it into a video tag. Now we cannot edit a, edit a video tag, so we need to copy that into a canvas and then process that canvas. And what we'll do is remove the green or the blue and replace that with something else. So first step, take the user's camera input. To do this, we actually use get user media, which is really simple to use and is available almost in every browser. This will return a promise, and then we can work on it. So we got our video tag with an ID of video, and we copy all the streaming from the camera into that video. And if it doesn't work, we just throw an error message. And we get something like this. And it works kind of OK. So you got your video tag. You accept the that prompt that says, would you allow using your video? And perfect. So let's copy that into a Canvas tag. So we get to create our Canvas with an ID of Canvas, because I'm really creative. Um, then we basically allow to the context, and we creates a function like this. So what this function will do is it will take all the information from our video from the top left corner and to the bottom right corner, and it will copy it into our canvas. Now, if you only use this code, we will have one issue. That is that only we will see the first frame of the video copy into the canvas. And then the video will keep on streaming, but the canvas won't refresh. So we need to refresh the canvas all the time. There are so many great performance talks in this conference. That's why mine is not performance. We are going to do a set time out of zero. <laughs> so if we do a set time out of zero, we get something like this. We get the prompt, will you share your camera with this website? Yes. And then we get the video on the left, the original video, and on the right, the canvas. And something else. We get my cat. <laughs> so it works. It works perfectly, and it refreshes all the time. 
So next is to process the canvas, is to remove the green or the blue. For that, we need to do something called pixel manipulation. So we need to actually kind of remember a little bit about what is a pixel. Now I know this is a front-end conference, but let's take a closer look anyway. So a pixel is the tiniest part of a video or an image, like this. And a pixel has information, in this case, RGB information. So if we take a look at this pink, we are actually taking a look at this red, plus this green, plus this blue. And all those three added returns this pink. And RGB goes from 0 to 255, 0 being black, and 255 being the strongest red, the strongest green, and the strongest blue. So in this case, we got a really strong red, a kind of dark green, and a kind of in the middle blue. And there's also the alpha channel. And I know this sounds weird, because there is no such a thing as transparency in videos. But anyway, when we ask for information, it will return the alpha too. So what we will do right now is we will ask for every pixel information of every frame that our video is getting. And we will ask for the red value, the green value, the blue value, and the alpha value. And then we will turn that alpha value into zero. So that will be the trick. So we find the green pixels and we remove them. To find the green pixels, we need to take a look at the information of the video. So to do that, we use get image data. Get image data will return all the information from every part of the video in an RGBA way. Plus, it will return the height and the width of the video. So when I console log that, I get this, which is okay. The width of the video is 480. The the height is 480, the width is 640, and here it is, the 1.2 million array. Because, yeah, why wouldn't you need a 1.2 million array? What is this 1.2 million? Because it seems like a random number. It's actually the width of the video multiplied the height of the video multiplied 4, because 4 is the number of information that you get from each pixel, the red, the green, the blue, and the alpha. So if you open that, you get this. So you open it again, and again, and again. And suddenly, you get to the important part. <laughs> so in this part, it looks like random numbers again. But we can find a sequence. The sequence is 255. So we know that video doesn't have transparency. So that must be the alpha. And if that is the alpha, that means that we can identify the others. Is RGBA, RGBA, RGBA of every pixel beginning from the top left. So if we take a look at the first pixel, we get this value, which is equal to this RGBA. So how we get there is something like bluish, yeah, <laughs> because it's 55 of red, 74 of blue, and 86 of green, of, sorry, 74 of green and 86 of blue. So it's kind of bluish and it's really dark because those are really low values. And the one of the alpha. So let's go through all that data, and let's find the green pixels. So we need to identify them. We identify the red values, the green values, and the blue values. And then we ask if the green is greater than the blue, and if the green is greater than the red. If that is the case, I'm going to turn the opacity value to zero. And then I have to return this new information to our canvas. So this gets us something like this. which looks really bad. I mean, it works, but we cannot be really happy on celebrating because of that. So we need to improve it. There are two things that are really wrong in there. First one is the light. That is natural light. That's why I say natural light is like the devil. You don't do natural light. You can see that it's like a lot of light coming from one side and nothing from the other. And then we need to remove the colors only if the greens are bigger than 100. Why? Because, as you can see, part of my hair has been taken away. And my hair is not green, as far as I know, but it's brown. And basically, browns and grays have a value of red, green, and blue. So even though if those values are really low, the computer will still identify if something has only one more pixel of green, and it will pick it as green, even though it isn't. So whenever it is too dark, whenever the value is too close to zero, 
we really cannot trust it. So we won't remove values that are lower than 100 because those are dark values and we are not sure if they are really green or, or if they are maybe browns or greys. So we get something like this in return. So it kind of works better. We have now no natural light. And we have to remove only the greens if they are bigger than 100. So as you can see, my hair is normal again, but there is something wrong with my t-shirt. I know what you're gonna say, it's a Harry Potter t-shirt, it's magical. Yes, but also it's white. And white has a tendency to take in a lot of the colors from the surroundings. So I could either modify my code or change my t-shirt. Guess what? <laughs> I changed my t-shirt. That's why I'm wearing black today. <laughs> this is what every developer we have done. <laughs> so let's try it live. Let's see. So I got this, will you share your camera? I got, I got two cameras. I got the camera from the computer, and they lent me this one. So I'm going to use this camera, which is much better. Uh, here I am. So this is the video on the left and the canvas on the right. And I made this kind of drop down where you can select if you want to filter green or blue. It's in green right now. So we got this, and we open green. And what you can see is now Howard's, because that's the background. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and if you turn it into blue, you can see the same, but it only filters blue and not no longer green. So that's pretty cool. But let's make something even cooler, which is basically an invisibility cloak, because if you like Harry Potter, why wouldn't you make an invisibility cloak? So how does it work? Well, you need to take a picture of your background without you. So I'm going to move over here. Let's take this. There you go. And I'm going to take a picture of that. And then I'm going to use that as a background instead of the hard words. So let's take this picture, the one I just took. I'm going to copy it into our images folder right next to hard words. Let's copy the name. And let's modify our beautiful CSS. So it, won't longer, it will not no longer be hard words. It will be Windows something. And that's it. So we can refresh now, and we get that as background image. That's great. Um, we are going to allow the camera. Let's see, did I use the right camera? That's my question. Yes, I used the right camera. That's it. That's good. <laughs> Let's choose the other camera over here. All right. And we are filtering green, so we got green. And the thing you need to do is like to cover yourself. And that's it. It's pretty simple. It's like, it's done and invisible. <laughs> Thank you very much. It also works with, with blue because you always, any time you get a chance to make a silly of yourself, it's like, please do so. So it always loves that. Great. The best dress you can get for a conference when you are an introvert. Yes. <laughs> so, one final point over here, which is what happens if we want to make something else? What happens is we, we don't only, not only want to modify the backgrounds, that's my fallback. <laughs> so, more pixel manipulation. Um, again, Paramore video. In this part, um, the, da the, the singer is dancing, and at the same time, there are two versions of her dancing as well, with the same moves. So that is rotoscoping. Somebody actually draw that and copy it right next to her. So we can do something like that. Um, I'm not going to dance. That would be awkward. Taylor Swift is dancing. So we are going to grab this gift of Taylor Swift, and we are going to remove the background. And then we are going to copy Taylor Swift. So now we get free Taylor Swift. <laughs> I, I also kind of shrink the two other Taylor Swift, so it gets a kind of nicer effect, but you don't really need to do that. So to copy the Taylor Swift, what you do is create another canvas, and then you position them with 
potential relative and absolute. Um, then, after you copy them, you need to make them pink. So what you need to make pink is not the green area, because the green is gone. You need to make pink what is left of the green. So we used to have an if statement. We are going to use the else. So if what is left um, is not a green pixel, what we are going to do is we are going to grab the zero value and the number two value. And the zero value and the number two are the information from the green and the blue. So if you put a high value of green, of red, um, and a high value of blue, what you get is kind of pink. So high red plus high blue give us pink in the second um, Taylor Swift and in the third Taylor Swift. So you get something like this, which is Taylor Swift dancing and pink Taylor Swift the size. And if you want to make it better, you can add kittens, because they always make things better. And since we are in a JavaScript conference, you can add the Arc logos, because why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> so I know it's not rotoscoping, because again, it's a computer, it's not a human doing that. But it's pretty cool. And you can do a lot of stuff. You can really open your mind to whatever you want. And it runs in your browser. I mean, when I was a child and I used to do like these kind of green screen things, I used to actually buy it. Um, Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects because I couldn't afford it. I was like 15. So I no longer think that. Now I got my own software. Now I got the browser and I can do that with JavaScript. So thank you very much for listening. I will leave you with these links. If I were you, I wouldn't open the second one on my phone because it crashed mine. It's actually the <laughs> online version of that. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you very much. <laughs>